You went with me two years ago on the longevity trip to see uh, Dean's facility, right? And we're going to go back there this year. When we were there last, he was, uh, pil- he was building, longe- uh, building ligament bone segments. And Dean's genius, applied with Doris's genius, is he's a manufacturer processing engineer and put stem cells or put skin cells created into induced pluripotent stem cells in one end and get a heart coming out the other end. Um, yeah, I remember having a conversation with, with Elon in which he said that the idea is the easy part. Even the design is the easy part. It's the operationalizing it, uh, making it into something that can be repeated over and over again. That's everything. Right. And we're at the slog through it stage. Yeah. We're at the slog through it until we're convinced it's, I can do it with your cells and your cells and your cells. When people come uh, this August and September uh, and we visit you and Dean, what will they see down there? So what we will, what we will show you is places where we are storing cells, place, how we're growing the cells, and a clean room system. You'll be able to look in our clean room system, see the robot injecting cells into hearts. And the, and the future is building a heart hotel where we have 40 hearts in a hotel behind the robot that live in that ecosystem every day we're, we're partnering with Advanced Solutions, a great robotics company to do this. And I've already taught Bab, their bioassembly bot, how to inject hearts. We do a fist bump at the end of those. It's pretty fun. Um, but the reality is this is not science fiction anymore, and it's not BS. You know, um, I had some surgeons come visit and they said, Doris, we've heard about this for years, but we couldn't wrap our minds around it until yeah. we saw it. And I, and I said, yeah, some surgeons still think this is BS and 20 years away, like we heard with quantum, and it's not. With the right people and the right resources, it's five years away. That's amazing. Can you imagine having a backup set of organs We have that for our cars, our planes, our dishwashers, but the idea of having a backup set of organs to, I mean, people don't realize, and thank you for correcting me, it's five times the number of women in breast cancer. Thank you, I have that new data point. Um, But people don't realize how vicious heart disease and stroke is. It it robs fathers and mothers uh, and sometimes teenagers. uh, uh, Every 34 seconds. Um, You said that that these uh, that heart disease and aging is a failure of stem cells. Right. Can you speak to that a second? Yeah, I believe aging and all the chronic diseases that are associated with aging are a failure of endogenous repair. Yeah. And that endogenous repair is stem cell based. And that as we age, we've shown data. First of all, we were the first to show data that the stem cells you have, if you're a man or a woman, differ. Mm-hmm. That the composition of your bone Which marrow, one's better? if you're a man, who do you think? <laughs> who do you think? I'm clear. Do you think I'd bring it up? <laughs> Come on. No, seriously, seriously, we, we were able to show that as you age, as you develop cardiovascular disease, men develop cardiovascular disease like this. They get it earlier. Over time, women develop it later and they catch up. We were able to measure stem cells and blood and show that they directly paralleled Amazing. that development you of know, disease. You know, we start as a, a newborn with a huge supply of endogenous stem cells in every compartment of your body, brain, muscle, every place. Blood, bone marrow. Yeah, and as you age, that population goes down because the body was never meant to live past age 30. Right. And because, because we t- every time we take a hit, we use some of those cells, right? And that explains why when someone has a trauma, traumatic injury, they age very quickly thereafter. And I just want to say, stress is another word for inflammation. And inflammation is basically nature's cue. You fall down, you scrape your knee. This is the example I always use. Fall down, scrape your knee, it turns red. That's inflammation. Yes. That's nature's cue to say, hey, help. 
I've got an injury, send me cells. If you get the right cells there, you turn off the inflammation. If you're two years old, you regenerate that skin. You don't have a scar. If you're 62, you still get the same redness. You still recruit cells, but the cells are fewer in number and less potent. And that was the whole NIDAS first, and the whole thought behind exogenous stem cell therapy in the 90s when we started it was, if you don't have time or you don't have the number, let's get them there. And what we're finding, as you've heard over and over here, is that inflammation is basically a biomarker of whether or not that's working. And what I want to say is stress is another word for inflammation. And if you don't believe that, I, I measured I was privileged, I got to measure stem cells in one of His Holiness the Dalai Lama's uh, monks. Yes. And I, I drew his blood before and after he meditated on compassion for 15 minutes. Wow. There was a 40% increase in circulating stem cells in that 15 minute time. 40% increase. That's another reason to meditate, everybody. So, so, and if you don't believe inflammation, another word for stress, or strat, vice versa, look at a president after four years. Yeah, holy cow. Talk about a job I would not want to have.